What you're looking at here is a small database of camping gear sales in the U.S. and I want to keep track of it by the first four months of 2016. So I've got their column labels January through April, but I also want to keep track of it by employee or the employee's ID. So I've got their row labels and you can see that I got a cross tab thing going on here. So at this intersection, I've got the column label January, but the label for that row is this employee ID. So that's his sales for the month of January. Then when I advance in the same column down to the next row, it's the next employee for the same month. Now let's go ahead and go down next to this label. I just typed it in. So you can tell that we want to get the month total for January, and then we'll do it for February and so on. So to create a basic formula to add up all the cells within the month of January, go ahead and hit the equals key on the keyboard to let Excel know that we're going to enter in a formula. And then go ahead and type in the cell reference that we want to add up with the next one and the next one and so on. So this first cell that we want to add into the formula is going to be in column C, row 7. So the name of the cell or the cell reference is C7. And notice that when I type it in, it actually selects the cell so I can look at it graphically and go, okay, that's what I wanted to add. And then to add the next cell, go ahead and hit the plus key on the keyboard, and the next one in the same column, which is still column C, is going to be the next row 8, so C8. And also, not only does it highlight it, but it does it in a different color so you can compare and contrast between exactly which part of the formula refers to what cell. And then let's go to the next one, plus, and then let's do C10. And you're like, oh, wait a second, I missed it. Well, let's just go ahead and accept the formula by hitting the enter key on the keyboard and say when you made a mistake, if you need to make changes to it, you can do it one of a couple of ways. Go ahead and select the cell and notice that it just shows us the value or the result of the formula, not the actual formula. To see the formula, you can look up here in the formula bar and you can make your changes up here. So click after C8 and then do plus C9 and hit enter. And notice before I hit enter, I was typing all in lowercase. That will save you some time. Don't use the shift key because it will automatically convert the letters of the columns into uppercase. So when I hit enter and I go back to select it, it converted the lowercase c to uppercase. So save yourself some time. Now you can edit it up here and do it that way. And when I click in there, it goes into edit mode. Or to get out of edit mode, hit the escape key on the keyboard and then you don't have to mess with it. But you can go ahead and double click on the cell really fast and it puts you into edit mode within the cell as opposed to the formula bar. So if I come in here and I start messing around and typing in a bunch of stuff and I'm like, oops, I made a mistake, and you don't want to accept it, to get out of it and not to accept your changes, hit the escape key on the keyboard and it leaves it untouched. As you can see up here in the formula bar, it's the same formula. Now when I double click and I make changes and I'm done and I hit enter, it accepts it and it moves it down to the next cell, right? Or when you double click in it, if you want to accept it but stay in the same cell without moving, then you can come up here on the formula bar and click on enter. Of course you get the X which means to cancel which is also hitting the escape key. So click on enter and it doesn't move it out of there so you can stay in the same cell and look up here and not have to go back and reselect the same cell to check your formula by looking up into the formula bar. Now is this the actual correct sum for the entire range here? You can get out a calculator I suppose or you can do a check in Excel by clicking and dragging and selecting the range. Now remember, to select a range, you've got to have the white cross. So you can see the white cross, which is going to be there, basically, until after you select the range, and you're like, oops, I didn't mean to select that range, and you hurry and go over to the edge of the selection. You don't get the white cross. You get a four-way arrow. We already talked about that a little bit. We'll talk about that more later. Or you go to the bottom right-hand corner, and you get a black cross. We'll talk about that later. So you got three things you're concerned about that you don't want to see, at least two of them right now when you're selecting a range. Not the black cross, the four-way arrow, but just the white cross. So click and drag to select it, and then notice down below on the status bar, it gives you some stats of what you have selected on your spreadsheet. You get the average of the range of cells, so the average sales for that range is 21,000, and then the total count of the cells you have selected is four, and hey, the sum or the total there, 867, 867, it checks out. Now remember, as we talked about in an earlier training video, you can customize the status bar by right clicking on it and saying that you don't want to see the sum and click off. You can see the sum is gone. So let's right click on it and add the sum. You can add others like minimum and maximum. We'll learn those in a later training video. Let me go ahead and click off. And so that's one way or the basic way to, in this case, add up a range of cells. Now a shortcut to that, at least I think it's a shortcut, let's go to the next month for February and add up the same range. By hitting the equals key on the keyboard and selecting the first cell, 
hitting the plus key, second cell, plus, third, plus, fourth, then hit enter. I mean, clicking and hitting the plus key is a lot faster than typing it in, at least I think so. And we get the total for the month of February. And then another shortcut on top of that is that if you already have the function entered in, as we do for the first column, you can actually copy that function or formula and paste it. Now when you copy and paste it, are you copying the value or the actual formula? Good question, but I kind of gave it away. When you go ahead and select it and you want to copy it, you can do the shortcut keys on the keyboard, Control C, or just come up here on the Home tab to the clipboard group and click on the Copy button. When you click on it, notice that the cell you have selected starts moving and coming alive. It look like marching ants, where they're just marching around saying, hey, this cell is hot, it's active, this is the one that you want to copy from, so go ahead and select a destination. In fact, you can see down below in the status bar, select, whoops, let me get out of the way, select destination and press enter or choose paste. So now that we've got the cell that we want to copy, go ahead and choose the cell that we want to paste it in, and to paste it, you can either do Control-V as in Victor to paste, or come up here on the Home tab to the clipboard group and click Paste. And when you do that, you get a little Smart tag that you can click on, and you get different paste options. The default paste is right there, and the default paste is going to actually paste the formula, not the value. Because if it pastes the value of 867, then you'd see 867, but you don't see that, do you? In fact, in the cell, if you look up in the formula bar, what formula do you get? Do you get column C? C7, C8? No, you get column E, E7, E8, and so on. So hey, that's really cool. How did it know how to do that? Let me go ahead and click off, and to get rid of the marching ants, hit the escape key on the keyboard so it can stop that, unless of course you want to keep pasting that same cell to other cells, which we could have done for April, but I've got one more trick up my sleeve that I want to show you. But the reason why it knows that is because it's dynamic. It's relative. It's not an absolute that when I copy this cell, it has to always stay in that range. And we'll talk about absolute references in another training video. So it takes it and it says, fine, you paste the formula over here. I'm automatically going to update because I see a pattern that you've got the same range of cells. In other words, I don't have a number up here for March and a number down here for March and a number over here for March. I mean, there's just no structure to it or organization. So it would try to go all over the place. So it's important to create your database as concisely as you can and tight and organized because if it looks organized to you, most likely Excel is going to be able to help you out as it did with our copy and paste. And I'll talk about the errors of creating a database in a later training video to look out for so Excel can help you figure it out and not have to do the extra work that would be unnecessary when it comes to working with the data and using certain features in Excel. So we did the simple formula where we typed it in and then we used the mouse to go ahead and select the cells and then we went ahead and copy and pasted it, then the last thing I want to show you is that you can go ahead and use what's called the autofill handle. So if you have a cell adjacent, you want to copy and paste that formula over to the right-hand side, as in this example. Then in the lower right-hand corner of the cell that you have selected, hover over it until it turns from a white cross to a black cross. That's what's known as the autofill handle. And one of its functions, or the main function of it, is that when you click on the black cross and drag, it actually will copy the contents of that cell, not the values, but in this case the function, and paste it over to the next adjacent cell. It's like a copy and paste. You just click and drag and there you go. And did it update correctly with the cell selected? Look up here in the formula bar, and it's not E7, E8, which is this column. It updated to F7, F8. Very cool. And you can see with the smart tag, when you click on it, the fill options, where it copies the cells, or you can copy the cell and fill only the formatting or fill it without the formatting. So in other words, if you had a blue fill, bold numbers, underlying italics, and you clicked and dragged it over, you can say, don't copy the contents, I just like the formatting. So if I had it here, and I made it, and I made the color red, and I took the autofill handle and I click and dragged it over here, it copied everything over, but what if I want to click on the drop-down autofill handle and just say fill without formatting, so it doesn't bring over the formatting of the adjacent cell. Anyways, I digress because this autofill handle will cover in depth in a later training video, but there's the four options when it comes to helping you by starting with the basic formula and some of the shortcuts once you've created your first basic formula. Now let's go ahead and continue with basic formulas, this time with the twist. We'll do it for the average and get the average for each month. So next to label month average, let's hit the equals key on the keyboard 
And we can do it one of a few ways. Like if you want to take the month total and get the average for the four employees, then go ahead and select the cell, or you can type it in, C12. And then we want to divide that by the total number who contributed to that total. And the total number are four employees. So to divide it by four, you want to use the forward slash. And on the keyboard, that's the one that's left of the shift key. It's the one that has the question mark on it. Just don't hold down the shift key, otherwise you get the question mark. So that's your forward slash. And then type in four, hit enter, and there you go. You got the average. You want to confirm it? Go ahead and select it and come down below on the status bar. And we got 21, 21. Hey, it works out. You can do it that way. Or let's go to the next cell and do the average this way and type in equals. And let's go ahead and click on the first cell. And let's say we don't have the total for the entire month of February. So we have to add them all up first. So equals D7, then plus the next cell, plus the next cell, plus the next cell. And then we want to, what, divide it by four? So we do the forward slash, type in four. Oh, wait a second, there's something wrong with this formula. Because what it's going to do is it's going to add up the first three, then the last one, it'll add it up after it divides it. If you remember your algebra days, when you start putting in functions and formulas, it does multiplication and division first before it does the addition. So we want to do what's called order of operation, where we tell it what we want it to do first, and then what we want it to do second, and so on. So what we want it to do first is to add everything up. Then once it's all added with the total, as you see here, but down in this formula, then we want to divide it by 4. So the order of operation we'll do is by the parentheses, by adding 1 at the beginning, and then 1 at the end before it divides it by 4. So the first order of operation is what's in the parentheses first. Then after it's done adding, then it goes outside of it, and it says, oh, there's something that has to be divided by 4. So hit the Enter key on the keyboard, and does it work? Let's go ahead and check. Click and drag. Do we get 1, 2, 4? Hey, there it is, 1, 2, 4. It works. And then, of course, if you want to not type it all in again, you've got adjacent columns that you want to enter in the same formula, then go ahead and hover over the lower right-hand corner, get the black cross or the autofill handle, click and drag, and it copies over the formula, not the value or the result of the previous formula. Let's see if it does that. Select the cell, and up here, does it say D7, D8? No, it's the next column, E, so that worked. Or like I said in the previous training video, you can copy and paste as well. Copy the formula and paste it. And Excel can figure that out because we've got a clean database. When we go from one cell to the next, it sees it as relative, so it automatically updates from one column to the next. In fact, let's just go ahead and do Control-C, select the cell, Control-V as in Victor to paste it. Hit the escape key to get rid of the marching ants. With the cell selected, you can see it updated to the next column, the F's and not the E's. Now, in order to perform a calculation, you don't have to have pre-filled cells with numbers. You can actually just do it from scratch in one cell. For example, if I select an empty cell and I'm like, okay, what's 199 minus 1? Type in equals 199 minus 1, hit enter, and there you go. I didn't have to select any other cells. I just did it all in one cell. With the cell selected, you can see the formula up in the formula bar, or you can double-click to edit within the cell, and then hit Enter, also equals 25. Now for multiplying, hit the asterisk key on the keyboard. Let's do 4, hit Enter, it's 100. Oh, and then one last thing that I want to show you, now that we have data to work with, we've got a database that if I want to zip from one side to the other, I know it's small, but you can imagine if I had all the way over to column AA, and I want to quickly get over there, I don't want to click and drag the scroll bar and scroll, 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 but instead, go ahead and click anywhere within the database. If you want to get to the first column on the right, then with the selection of that cell, hover over the border until you can see a four-way arrow. Double-click really fast, and it goes to the furthest column in the database. And you can double-click on the bottom, takes you to the bottom of it, double-click on the left, and of course the top, it takes you to the top. 